good afternoon and thank you for joining us for our second webinar of Wild Screens Emerging Talent Month 2023. My name is Georgia and I'm the Outreach Coordinator here at Wild Screen. So the Wild Screen Emerging Talent Programme seeks to provide an insight into natural history film and TV industry and um, unpick the details of the roles available. It also provides information about how you as emerging talent can get your foot in the door or progress in your natural world storytelling career. So today we're going to be discussing the skills needed for a career in production management and how you may be able to transfer these skills directly from other industries such as hospitality, events and retail. You may in fact already have some of these key skills needed to thrive in production management roles. So we're gonna dig into what those skills look like and how uh, they you can apply them in a production management setting. There will be a short Q&A at the end of the webinar, so please feel free to pop any questions you have at any point in the Q&A box, which is down at the bottom of your Zoom window. Um, so to discuss these key transferable skills, I'm thrilled to be joined by Jane Zurakowski and Fran Barbieri. Jane is production management exec at BBC Studios and Fran is production manager at One Tribe TV. So thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Lovely to be here, thank you. Thank you for having us. No problem at all, it's a pleasure. So just so we're all getting started on the same page, please could you tell us all a little bit more about yourselves and your role? Jane, do you want to go first, maybe? I'll go first. Okay, hi. So, yeah, hi, everyone. Lovely to spend the lunchtime with you. So, my name is Jane Zorakowski, and um, I'm a talent exec for BBC Studios. And what does that mean? I look after the external recruitment of production management across the Southwest. So, I look after the natural history unit as well as factual entertainment. But in my previous life, I was a production manager in factual. Um, I've, I was tossing it up, I've nearly been in the industry 30 years. I started off as a runner back at Granada Television back in 1994, showing my age now. Um, and I knew very quickly that production management was for me. Um, I love the log logistical side of programming. So my career has been incredible. I've worked on current affairs. I've worked in live. I've worked, um, I've done some foreign filming. I've worked in high-end docs. I've worked in studio I've worked in a, an, an incredible mix of um, genres and I'm still learning um, and so I've moved from Manchester I moved to London and then I've been in Bristol now um, sort of 10 years I've worked for independence as well as BBC and um, I'm very proud to say that I won my first RTS West award a couple of weeks ago yes and finally production management get their name on the um Trophy, the award. So that was a fantastic um, closure, really, to my production management career. And now I'm absolutely delighted to be in talent and I'm looking to build the pipeline into the industry. And so it's great to come and talk today. So thank you for having me. That's me. Thanks, Jane. And Fran, over to you. Hello. Um, so a bit about me. So I uh, studied performance and media at university because I loved drama and media. I combined both both passions. Um, and at the time, I actually wanted to do more on camera things. Um, but then throughout my course, realized actually I love being behind the camera and doing all the organization um, to which I graduated in 2017. And then the following year, um, I was um, um, I was uh, part of the uh, industry talent scheme called The Network, which is part of Edinburgh International TV Festival, um, uh, which was a really amazing scheme. Um, there was, uh, yeah, we, there was a few days in Edinburgh where we um, met several industry people where we learned a lot. We applied uh, lots of skills and um, we produced uh, a live 30 minute show for an audience. It was really brilliant, learned a lot from it and met some fabulous people. And um, the weekend after that, I actually started at One Tribe as uh, work experience. And that was, uh, yeah, summer 2018. And now I'm still here. Um, I worked as work experience, then a runner, then production assistant, then PC, then junior PM. And now I'm uh, delighted to say that I've recently been promoted to production manager. Um, so uh, I've worked on 
uh, the one show. Uh, we make all the um, we make all the weekly one big thank yous for the one show. Um, I've worked on a natural history show called Wonders of the Celtic Deep for BBC Two and BBC Wales. Um, I've done uh, uh, recently RTS Cymru nominated uh, the rescue um, uh, Fifty Four Hours Under the Ground, which was an amazing cave rescue story for BBC Wales and BBC Two, um, and yeah, multiple, uh, mostly documentaries and um, and short form and uh, natural history stuff. But yeah, absolutely loving, uh, loving it at One Tribe. Um, really lucky with all the opportunities I've been given. So thank you for having me uh, join today. It's a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Um, so uh, as you kind of both uh, just demonstrated, production management is super multifaceted. Um, and for this particular conversation, it feels like the obvious place to start. So um, Jane has a few slides. Uh, could you just give us a brief overview of what yeah. exactly production management is? OK, whenever we do these webinars, BBC, um, I just want to say sort of give you a very, very simple analogy of what production management is. So if you were building a house, you'd have the architect. And the architect is somebody who's saying, OK, Jane, I've got this vision and I want, to, I want to obtain this vision. How do we make that happen? And so they will have the blueprint. I want this house and I want it in this location. I want so many windows and doors and stuff. And we're like the builders. So we come in and we build their sort of vision and it's symbiotic so one cannot exist without the other so production management editorial work very very closely hand in hand to make this incredible content so um i just want to share some slides as um george has said let me just put these to so hopefully everyone can see that yeah so when we talk about production management i know that um if you've heard about it people think it's just about systems and, and processes and it really really isn't uh, and hopefully Fran and I will convince you by the end of this session um, so I always say that the role really for production management is broken down into three components communication finance and logistics okay those skill sets but if I was to put that in a pie chart how would I divvy that up in terms of percentages now if we're in an interactive session I'd, I'd ask you if you want to put in the chat sort of what you think the percentages would be. That would be really helpful. Um, just It's just really an idea of what people are thinking. What do you think? How, what, what, how would you proportion that in terms of percentage-wise? Communication, finance, logistics. Anybody got any ideas? I know Perry's on the call and she'll know. She knows the answer. <laughs> Anybody? Let me look at the chat. Yeah. You're absolutely right. So let me show you the next slide. I would say, hang on, there you are. Communication, and I hope Fran will agree with me. I think we are on the same page, aren't we, Fran? Is yeah. communication is absolutely key. It's 70% of this job. So talking to you guys, you will be doing this anyway, okay? This is really important. Teamwork is about dealing with different stakeholders. Communication is absolutely the centre of what we do. I always say we like mission control. We move things along. Um, logistics, um, yes, of course, that's going to be a really big uh, proportion of the job. Um, I'd say that would be sort of 25% um, of the job. Communication and log logistics go hand in hand. What are we talking about? I've got to get to someone from A to B. I've got to be filming in this country. I've got to get my crew out from the UK, filming there, blah, blah, blah. Logistics. It is a bit of a nightmare, but you know what? It's absolutely part and key, a, a key skill set to our job. Communicate. Um, sorry, finance. That's quite a small part. Yes, we deal with budgets. Yes, we have to deal with the money, but actually it's only a small part of it. The majority of our job is making things happen with the creative problem solvers, with logistics and communication at the heart of everything we do. So I just wanted to show you this sort of like very simple table. If you, uh, and, and Fran will do this in her job, and please feel free to jump in, Fran. You know, communication, look at all that list of those buzzwords. You are, and you will be able to, in your current job, be able to translate that exactly the same. 
you're there supporting your team. You're there gathering intelligence. You're there sort of analyzing that intelligence and disseminating at the right time, the right place to the right people to keep moving things along. You have, uh, so in your jobs, you'll have deadlines for certain events. You work backwards and you know, all right, what are the pressure points? What do we need to achieve by then? It's the same with production. We will have a timeline of a program. We need to know these things need to drop before this can happen. So you're just and communicating, as I said, I keep going back to it. It's absolutely key. We're there holding that information together. We're the logistical problem solvers. Um, and we're going to deal with a hell of a lot of stakeholders and we need to keep everybody on side and giving them the right information at the right time. We're leading, we're persuading, we're influencing, we're coercing, we're creative thinking, all that sort of stuff. And most importantly, things do not go to plan. So, and that's probably absolutely, you know, in your job, your day-to-day -day jobs, things do not follow a beautiful timeline and a list you've got to be able to have that can-do attitude, right, okay, this has gone down, what are we going to do about that? So, um, as you can tell, communication key, logistics, yeah, we've got to get people from A to B, and things aren't as simple. You know, certainly for COVID, we were, you know, we were massively challenged production management, because obviously locations, you couldn't film in certain locations, we had restrictions, and production management held editorial's hand right through that, okay, yeah, and I and I think that that was our job, you know, because they looked at us and said, "What do we do? We don't know, but we're we're you know we're we're working to find solutions and learn as we were going along." So that was a really sort of tricky time for us. But yeah, it is about booking the right resources, talking to the health and safety. We've got to make sure everything's you know compliant. We've got to, you know, do, have relationships with our staffing. So as a production manager, I will be involved in this. Now I do staffing. I'll be in there communicating with the teams like who are the who's the best people to get on these shows what skill sets do they have you know which, which will complement what you're trying to do and also allow growth and development so anyway you get the picture and then budget it is very small you know we have budgets of course we need to be aware of our costing what we spend what we what we've committed and what we've got to come that's all really relevant but actually it's not sitting there the computer says no you know we're not there to just do admin and 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 systems we are there at the table helping create something very very special anyway i shall stop sharing my screen so that to me is production management fran please feel free to jump in or add to that i think you, I think you said it it's, yeah amazingly really amazingly great great Thanks, so, Jane. If it does feel like you um, just described uh, every restaurant manager's oh. night in the restaurant, trying to placate the chefs and the customers and making sure that the food gets out on time and it's the right thing. And it, it's just, it feels like a very similar setup, just in a different setting, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And it was also that resilience. And that sort of um, that calmness is really, really important because things will go wrong. And just to say, you know, I've worked in live OVs, live broadcasts, live shows. I'm not a technical expert, but what you can do is I've got a problem. Who do I speak to? So, again, communication there. Who are the experts I can speak to? And that's what you would be doing. Yeah, exactly. In your jobs is where can I get that information from? So, yeah, it's um, a lot of transferable skills, a lot. Brilliant. Thank you for that. So we have a, a people here tuning in from lots of different places. I saw that someone was tuning in from Japan uh, and lots of people from around the UK as well. Um, so lots of different places and working in a variety of different industries. Um, but I'm sure that everyone who's here uh, may be thinking what skills they have to bring to production management and specifically the film and TV industry. So just for some context, hospitality is a background that lots of people have, uh, and that's why it feels like a good example for all of us to be able to visualize the skills that can be transferred into production management from other industries. Mm. So by hospitality, we've touched on it. By hospitality, we mean retail, working in restaurants, working at events, working in bars, those jobs where you need to think on your feet, be super organized and problem solve, as Jane just mentioned. So, what do you think are the top three skills for production managers and how would they look in that setting 
uh, and also in the hospitality setting for context. Um, we have a slide here showing some examples of key skills, which Millie's going to bring up. Mm -hmm. But um, if you could both kind of walk us through what you think are the top three skills, that would be great. Fran, did you did you want to kick us off? Yeah, so I think very much um, being able to meet tight deadlines and work into schedules. I think that's a really important um, skill. Um, so speaking from experience, I used to work in a, a hotel that did weddings. Um, so of course, for a wedding, everything's got to go to schedule. You know, we've, we've got the 2 p.m. arrival drinks and at 3 p.m. we've got the wedding uh, breakfast, you know. So it's really important that you stick to that schedule and that, that very much transfers to the job within production management when we are making sure that our filming days uh, run smoothly. If we have a present uh, for one day we want to be able to make the most of that one day with them so it's important that we schedule accordingly um to make the most of the time yeah do you want me to go next yeah. <laughs> i'll pick one yeah um i think it's it's uh i, I won't communication is a given but i think create a problem solver that's really quite key in production management because you've got to you've got to adapt to an ever changing environment, and that's what you would be doing anyway. You know what I mean? You can't you can't structure an event and hope it all goes to clockwork. There's going to be things that unforeseen, um, ex, um, exterior pressures that external pressures that you have no control over. We have exactly the same. Um, and I think you need to be able to be um, unflappable and, and have that can-do attitude, right, okay, this has happened, what can we do that? So you're constantly rearranging your prioritising sort of skills. So I think um, being able to juggle quite a few things, um, you know, that is absolutely key. You'd be, uh, you know, you do have quite a lot of spinning plates. Um, and it's about systematically just like, right, okay, that's been done now. What does that need to do? So your prioritizing has to be really organic and it has to, you know, um, be really um, uh, agile. And so I think that's what translates beautifully from hospitality and event management because things you can't foresee the future, what's going to happen. And like you were saying from in the wedding plan, things will go wrong, but it's it's thinking on your feet. So um, I would say that for me at the moment, they're the real key, creative problem solver, great communicator, and being able to think on your feet and kind of do attitude and really, really important skill sets when I interview people. Mm. And very much being a team player as well. Massively. Being, you know, uh, work especially working, you know, in small um, in small teams, mm -hmm. you you help each other with everything you're not necessarily stuck in your lane doing yeah. your you know specific yeah. tasks you are very much helping everybody to get the get the job done um, yeah absolutely it massively plays a role in hospitality and and retail as well yeah yeah I mean you also you deal with you know you're going to be resilient you're dealing with difficult customers you know we've got different stakeholders if you think we you know work in natural history and it's incredible because obviously we've got so many um co-producers you know um people invested in our content and it's keeping everybody well informed um and and keeping the ball moving forward and communication is absolutely key to making sure people have the right information at the right time to make the right decisions um and you know and some really tricky stuff that we're dealing with in filming with and and it's about as, as totally as what Fran said, it's finding the right skill set to complement those sort of decision making processes to make sure it's really inclusive and production management and editor work really closely together to, to achieve that. Um, so, yeah, teamwork, absolutely key. Um, and working under pressure, you do. Sometimes, you know, things will completely sideswipe you and it's like, keeping a calm head and going okay fine but and it's and it's taking a breath and going right okay I'm not going to be reactive I'm going to think about this and then I'm going to come back with solution a b c d and you'll have so many different scenarios um and that's another thing you know having that sort of foresight to to plan ahead that you've got contingency plans at every sort of stage that you think that's a potential risk so what are we going to do about that how are we going to mitigate that you will do that in your 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 um 
your your work anyway. You do that. It's just like, you know, we can't just rely on this one solution. We've got to have a couple of other things in our back pocket. We're exactly the same. And then also there's um there's money management as well. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's something that you know cash handling when you're on a bar or re, uh, waitressing or, or retail or whatever at the teal um again very transferable skills yeah yeah i think we went through those <laughs> yeah you smashed through those thank you so much um you, you've mentioned before as well that there's a there's a big difference in kind of uh the different genres you've worked in. So I know for you, Fran, for uh, factual entertainment, that's very different for you, Jane, in, in natural history, isn't it? How those skills are applied. Could you just mm -hmm. give us a little bit of an insight um, into that specifically? Yeah, I think the two differences, I would say, well, first of all, obviously, um, it's rhythm. I always, I always talk about the different genres. They have different rhythms and different responsibilities. So um, I've worked across fact and and obviously natural history and foreign filming. Um, so, the, so the things for me, foreign filming, obviously we do an eclectic mix of things like the high end um, landmarks, like your David Attenborough stuff. But we also do children's, which is um, which is more studio based and UK filming. We can do things, we do obviously the live shows, we do the watches. So there's a lovely array of skill sets that we can use in production management across the new natural history genre. But if we just thought really sort of, let's just take sort of foreign filming, that is, that's a little bit more intricate because obviously it says what it is on the tin, foreign filming, you know, you've got to be thinking of where are we filming? How do we get that intel of, the best way of working and filming in that particular country. So there's a lot of lead of time. There's a lot of research and development. There's a lot of, um, you know, there is obviously we've got to do visas and permits and inoculations, and we have to find a fixer who is somebody who's got the local intelligence there. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of background work leading up to those foreign filming shoots. Um, and also the very high end, animals are unpredictable. So, you know, you've got to have so many different contingencies. So leading up to setting up foreign filming is quite intense and quite thorough. So it's about attention to detail. It's about, so as I said to you, it's about having um, contingencies for, um, you know, the location you're going to, if things don't work out, the animals don't turn up, where else are we going to be filming? What type of equipment do we need to be filming in that particular territory? Because obviously we have a different type of environments. We've got desert, we've got jungle, we've got Arctic, we've got, you know, underwater filming. So um, again, which is brilliant, is you, you're looking at who are the experts in those fields of filming. And so, as I said to you, it's a, it's a different pace. It's really quite... Um, um, a lot of research and development goes into those foreign filming. And then obviously fact end, Fran. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, uh, particularly, I, I mostly do documentaries in particular. Um, so yes, yeah, a very sim a similar skill set in terms of the organisation needs to be key yeah. um, and in think you know in case things go wrong with the weather. Um, but, um, but yes, it's, it's very similar in yeah. terms of of needing yeah. to make sure that you're organised and have those backup yeah. plans in case. Yeah. But I think fact then are a different, slightly different rhythm because obviously, Fran, you know, I worked on the one show and that was a live show and that was very, very fast paced. So you had to be really quite um, agile. And um, as I said to you, you know, it, it's that sort of right, that's gone wrong, we need to do that. So you had to have that type of brain where you're like, right, okay, we're doing this that no we're doing that now right what do you need from me and, and it was I mean by the end of the day you'd be like that well, you know but and then it starts all over again but it was a well-oiled machine and that, and that's what was fantastic about those strands and I always when I look at um entry level I always want to get them on a strand because you get that end to end from pre-planning stages through to the filming through to the editing through to delivery you get that faster on a fact end show on some I mean, I'm being very broad here, where it is a bit of a longer lead up, naturally so, with, with foreign filming and, and the natural history, particularly in that genre, because, you know, the, the story is unfolding and it takes time to get by those incredible shots, where fact 10, you know, you'll have a format, you'll, you'll know what you're filming, you come in, you do it, you film it, you're editing it, you're delivering it. 
And I love both paces. And I think that's what's great about production management is that you can work across different specialisms and genres. You sometimes gravitate to one thing and oh, actually that's the genre I want to go into. Like for me, live, love live. As you can tell, I'm, I'm not a shrinking violet. Um, I love being in that big team. And like you were saying, Fran, it's teamwork, isn't it? You're a big, it's a big beast, but you're just one part of a team that, you know, you're all working closely together. And without each of you, you can't deliver. And that teamwork and that camaraderie, which you will have in your jobs is just brilliant. Um, like when you put on an event, you know, you're putting on an event, I'm putting on an event, but I have cameras and you don't have cameras. It's that simple. Do you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, it's, um, it's, it's different rhythms, different rhythms. Mm. Before George jumps on, shall I just reply to Paul? So does hospitality events and retail? Yeah, absolutely. So Paul, I've had people, I've had someone from the cosmetics industry, advertising industry, um, prison officer, teacher, um, we've got somebody who did um, fashion retail. So yeah, absolutely. They've been able to transfer into the industry. They've worked up through um, the entry level route um, or some have got production coordinator roles outside in the Indies. Um, I've got some people who've done that and they've come to the BBC. And I think it's very transferable. It's fantastic. Because as I said to you, I, I always put it in one in one little sort of like sentence, if you're a creative problem solver with a can-do attitude, highly organized, great team player and great communicator, production management is something, you know, as a career path you should you should consider. That was quite a good example of things going wrong, wasn't it? Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. I could hear all of you guys, but was I frozen? I know, I know, I know, love it. Apologies, everybody. Um, so can you hear me now? All good, yeah? All good. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so uh, from what you were both just saying then, um, it, it feels like these demonstrating these skills feels quite anecdotal. You know, it, it will always be a story of how, how you um, applied them in whichever setting it was. And it, it does feel a bit like selling these skills in your CV can be quite tricky. Um, so, so Fran, you mentioned that you kind of you done a lot of work with weddings and in events before. Could you give us some insight into how you went about it when you entered the industry? And yeah. then, following that, Jane, could you tell us what makes you happy when you look at us? Yeah, strange, but what's the best way to demonstrate these skills and transferable experience? Uh, Fran, yeah. do you want to go first? Yeah, of course. Um, so I had been doing extra work since I was in school, um, uh, which was great. Um, gave me good insight into, you know, uh, how the industry works on a set. Um, and uh, throughout, it really helped me then throughout my degree. And then after I graduated, um, uh, I was working in retail um, and whilst working in retail I was still continuously trying to do more and more extra work but this time I was asking the runners more questions how did they get into the industry trying to learn as much as possible um, from people uh, who I was working with um, and which was brilliant and as well as that I uh, applied for talent schemes as I mentioned earlier I, I was selected on the uh, the uh, the network which was fabulous um, and I used the experience that I gained from there and put that onto a CV to explain all the skills that I learned throughout that process um, and include as well as the skills I learned on the talent scheme I included um, my uh, the projects that I worked on throughout university and uh, those skills that I learned from there I always took a, took on the production manager role within the university so uh, use, uh, talked about those skills and then yeah I talked about my recent my experience in wedding um, on weddings in retail and then I worked in I think it was the busiest weather spoons in Cardiff <laughs> um, so uh, just, yeah it was um, yeah on rugby days it was always uh, <laughs> quite challenging but use those transfer Wearable skills, you know, being able to deal with um, those, you know, long hours with, um, with, uh, you know, sometimes um, 
challenging uh, situations and, and being able to communicate well. And, and again, you know, like we were saying earlier, work under pressure, um, you know, that all, oh, oh my gosh, working on that bar during rugby days, they ticked all those, uh, those transferable yeah. skills. So I made sure I inputted that within my CV. And then um, I was, I applied um, for work experience um, and I contacted, um, uh, contacted One Tribe and um, said about the programs that they made, about how much I really enjoyed their work um, and, and went from there really. But yeah, made sure that I included all that re- uh, transferable skills within my CV. Yeah. I think you've answered what I was going to say, Fran, absolutely right. I echo that. So as a talent exec, Um, when I look at CVs and give people advice, it's about using all that wonderful soft transferable skills and put that in your CV to give context. So what I would suggest is, you know, is people certainly, obviously I'm only speaking on behalf of the BBC and, you know, you want to be able to get a job description of what the production management assistant role is and production coordinator, because it depends on what sort of level experience you've got, you know, find out and have a look at those and go, okay, What does a production coordinator do? Um, And does that translate into what I'm sort of doing? And again, like Fran said, it's about making your CV um, very sort of much um, BBC sort of, um, not BBC, what I'm saying, TV industry friendly. So yeah, I would always say, you know, um, I've got, because at the top of a CV, you always want to put a USP. You always want to put a unique selling point. You want to be able to say, because we read that first and it's like a hook. It's like read down. So I say, for example, Georgia, um, having recently left the event um, industry, um, I've got some extremely amazing transferable skills. I dealt with budgets. I dealt with scheduling. Um, I looked after, um, um, you know, events with 150 people, but all these wonderful sort of, and I'm looking for a career in production management and keen to look for my next opportunity. That's what you have to say. We've said it over and over again. We'll keep saying it. You need to say you're creative problem solvers, you're team players, you've got resilience you're great at troubleshooting, you've had budget responsibility, you've been able to meet tight deadlines, all these I look at. So exactly what Fran was saying, you know, if I was interviewing Fran, I'd be like, oh, tell me, what did you do at university? And if you say to me, or what are you doing at the moment? Well, actually, I manage a team of five people. I'm responsible for the scheduling of those staffing. I work with the budget and um, I look after the logistics and I go on location and I set this up. I am already going great, 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 because that is really lovely, soft, transferable skills. So um, so that's what I sort of look for sort of on CVs is that if I know someone is green, I'm starting to look at um, look at but what translates into what levels responsibility have had or have they had and where are they placed? Are they more junior entry level or are they actually senior management and where, you know, what are they looking for in terms of transferring into the industry? Um, so, yeah, does that hopefully answer that question? Yeah. Shall I, before we get Georgia back on, there was um, there was a question from Leela. You have spoken a little about things going wrong and if mistakes happen. In your experience, what's the best way to handle this on a big project for me personally? I have worked on, I've worked on a very big program that was really challenging. And I think it's about keeping a calm head. I called a meeting um, because quite a few things had gone wrong. And I called all the heads of department and I asked them, I sat there. And I asked them to list all the things that were wrong or the things that were challenging or the things that weren't, we weren't being able to, they, they, they felt that weren't delivering. And I made a list and I just went and I went through systematically and said, OK, I, what do I need to action here? Who do I need to go and get that information? Things will go wrong on small scale, big scale, but it's about going, OK, what can I control? What can I do now? What can't I control? But where do I need to go and find that information to help things move along? Sometimes you have to refer upwards. This is out. This is out of my responsibility. I don't know what to do. And so it's always about asking questions. And I think a hive mind is really, really good. You're never isolated. That's why we keep banging on about teamwork is that for me, when things were going wrong, it was literally, I need to call a meeting. I need all my heads. What is going on? What do you need me to do? How can we move to the next phase? 
And I think it's having that leadership, having that con- that sort of confidence to go, right, okay, I'm listening. You can't panic. You might be panic inside, but it's like having a cool head and right, okay, I don't know. I don't know the answer at the moment, but I'll go away and find that answer. And that's absolutely relevant. Do you agree, Sam? 100% agree, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I think... Um, I think that was quite relevant during COVID. And I think lots of people from various, um, uh, you know, hospitality and retail um, will will have experienced that during uh, COVID and had to have those conversations, which again, are very transferable into into production management. So my last question was just, where are these roles being advertised? You know, do you have any top tips of where people can look and keep an eye out uh, or access yeah. other resources as well. That might answer a few people's questions. Yeah, okay. So um, first of all, know your base, okay? Who's in your base? When I say base, where are you based? As in Manchester or London or Liverpool or wherever. You want to know what is the TV industry like in that base? Who are making the content? And you need to... You need to connect and network with people like myself who are the talent managers or talent execs in those particular indies. Um, and, and it's about, like you said, like Fran did, you know, you wrote a bespoke email to one tribe. I love your output. I'd love to come and talk to somebody uh, about this. We love that. I love the fact that people have taken the time and sort of like, now for me, I... It's, I try, and I know Fran, I know you do as well. I do try and meet people who are interested in production management um, because I don't want to miss anyone because that, you know, and and I'm so pleased that, you know, the pipeline entry level, we're bringing people in. I'm trying to find ways of creating pipelines in the PC role at the moment. Um, so I really like, I love meeting and talking to career changers. Um, and that's how we've we've got people in through entry level into the BBC. Um, but I totally understand that that's an, that that is a massive ask for people to come start at the bottom. I I would say start at the bottom. It just builds a foundation. But if you're coming with soft transferable skills and responsibility, you know it's about talking to the indies. And I know that the indies during the past two years, when I see indies, the independent production companies, not the big broadcasters, the independent one, and they are fantastic. Because they are, they have given opportunities. Certainly, in the southwest hasn't there, Georgia. We've had, um, we've had a different natural history companies that have been able to take people from advertising, put them in PC roles. It's been a massive learning curve on the job, um, and some of those people are, you know, after their time in the independence, are in the BBC now. I've got a couple working on some landmarks, which is fantastic. We know it works. So I think it's about perseverance. I think it's about. Um, it's a gathering intelligence because it's a massive, um, it's a massive sort of decision to make. I know moving industries, but there are lovely soft transferable skills. And at the moment, there's, there is a is, there is a shortage of production management in the industry because we haven't championed it enough at grassroots, um, and that's no fault of anybody's. It's just it's just that the industry has really been led by editorial and um, uh, but production management absolutely key. So we're trying to get the word out, um, and we're trying to build the talent base. And you know, I know some people on this on this call. I've got great relationships with who also run courses for production management, uh, which is fantastic. You know, so and screen skills are brilliant. Screen skills are fantastic for training, aren't they, Fran? As well, yes, brilliant. And then there's also um, Colt Cymru. For uh, who provide uh, training in uh, usually at discounted rates um, for people who live in Wales, um, and uh, there's also um, other career of events such as um, RTS Cymru. Uh, RTS they provide uh, career advice events quite often. Um, as we said earlier, there's lots of schemes about as well. You know, the one I did was called the network, but there's plenty of others out there as well. Um, and also there's Facebook groups. Um, yep which a lot of people advertise roles and positions on. Um, so I fully recommend joining those, joining the running and the production management groups on there. And also the talent manager, that's where we uh, advertise a lot of opportunities. Yeah, yeah. It is difficult. Um, I know that some of these Facebook groups are for people who've already got some credits or whatever, but 
just have a look at, there's a Facebook group called My Transferable Skills. That's a really good one. Someone started that in COVID because we were using people from different industries to come into production management when we were all just, you know, full pelt. Um, so, yeah, but I, I would say it's about, you need to, um, it's, it, it's about it's, it, it's about networking and just getting in touch with, I mean, I'll put my name in, in the chat, but, you know, it's, it's, it's having those conversations because you just need to gather intel because it's, it's a big decision to, to uh, appreciate that looking at different industries. OK, let's go to questions. OK, other than the soft transfer uh, skills you mentioned, what other skills are helpful to the wannabe piece for any software driving license? Um, you don't necessarily have to have a driving license production. I mean, I don't I mean, it's great because then, you know, if you drive into location, you can share the driving. Um, but PC stuff, I mean, you are going to have to be best friends with Excel because we, I'm sure Fran, you will say exactly the same. We've got some fantastic color coded scheduling that we do. Um, so yeah, Excel is absolutely key and all the Microsoft, um, you know, um, packages are really important. You know, we deal with Teams, Zoom, you know, we do Outlook, um, outreach, things like, um, sorry, Outlook, I can't remember the words, you know. Um, so yeah, so those type of packages are really, really important. Um, for mid career switches, I think we've talked about it. Yeah, you know, it's it it depends on your your situation, but I mean, entry level is great because it's about it's about building that knowledge and consolidating. What I always say is, I'd rather people come in and go, da da, look what I can do, uh, instead of being put in a position where they're really going to. Um, not saying struggle you've got but what you need is you need the tv brain dump you need the tv experience and knowledge you've got everything else you've got the bare foundations you just need to build the walls of that particular um uh, knowledge so it depends on the type of program and it depends on the type of sort of um uh, opportunity uh, open um i i'm always and i know fran is doing the same you know we do always speak to the business about where are those opportunities for um, training or, um, you know, taking someone green that we can, you know, that we can um, help progress and all that sort of stuff. So we do do it. Ta talent talent network is really important. So that's why independents and, and broadcasters will have talent teams like myself um, and the hiring managers would be Fran. We can't give jobs. What we can do is we can we can build together a portfolio portfolio of CVs that we offer to our hiring managers, and they make the decisions because they're looking at the skill sets across the whole of that production, and they need to make sure that it's at the right level with the right expertise. Is that right, Fran? Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's natural. It's production management, natural history, factual management, generally more open to considering people outside the industries. So when we say production management for drama, we have had people who've done drama um, and they've they've come over to unscripted. So drama for me, my BBC hat on, and I think for the industry, we talk about scripted and unscripted. So scripted are things like your continuing dramas, your high-end dramas, your comedy. And then unscripted, it says what it is in the book. It's it's that it's that story unfolding. So it's whether it's factual entertainment shows. Uh, entertainment and music, science, docs, um, natural history, um, that's sort of unscripted. So people can move between different specialisms um, within the industry. If you're in, in drama, we, you know, we're open to that because it's all relevant. Yeah. Is it national? There's a close on the job in the industry. No. Um, we're inclusive at the end of the day we just got to get the right people for the right job the best talent so in terms of certainly for the bbc um we are um you know obviously you you've got you've got um a right to work in the b a right to work in the uk that's absolutely but if if you're coming from another country then obviously it depends on the skill set required for that particular project production of whether there's there's visas involved and what have you but that's that, I, that I'm not best placed to answer that really I'm just I just look after the UK um people who are eligible to work in the UK but they can be from a variety very inclusive background it's fantastic are the specific schemes the BBC run for people interested in change of production the BBC yes um just email me Paul 
um, I'm, I'm, I'm just interested. I'm interested in, in talking to career changers. So we're always looking at ways of how we build our pipelines into the industry. So it's good to just have people who just can register their interests and I'll just keep tabs and I'll let you know if anything's coming up. Um, but yeah, BBC Academy, apprenticeship schemes, we've done all those. Um, and, uh, you know, there's the screen skills. I think they they run um, fantastic courses, don't they as well, Fran, Thank and you. schemes. Yeah, and then also um, a friend of mine who um, uh, I worked with on um, uh, a show before, she's um, got a company called Media Career Advice, um, yeah. and her courses are tailored specifically for production management, so I recommend yeah. it. It's Hannah, yeah, Anna Gosney, yeah. I just also, can you hear me now? I'm back. Uh, Yay! And you, you, <laughs> you have both proved your unflappability with the fact that I keep dipping in and out. So thank you for being amazing. Um, I just wanted to add the, the screen skills. Screen skills also offer bursaries for lots of training. Um, so they can, uh, I know in the past they've offered um, you know, bursaries to help with get driving lessons so you can obtain your driving license. They've also got like accountancy courses. Uh, they've got specific production management courses uh, and they're very, you know, they, they will pay for 90% of something if you're eligible for that bursary. So it's definitely worth checking them out because mm. they've got lots of really cool things on there which can help you to upskill uh, and you can pop on your CV essentially. Yeah. Um, I had a I had a question for you both. Um, so, uh, when people are applying for those entry level roles, something that a lot of people do is send their CVs to talent managers, um, and often people don't hear back because we appreciate that you guys are super duper busy. But that doesn't mean you haven't seen it. Um, is there kind of like a specific time frame? Say you've done something that uh, you'd like to update your CV or you, you know, you've got updates in your, in your professional life. Is there a time frame to send that updated CV? You know, is it every couple of months that people should be sending it through so um, they're fresh in your mind um, or is it a little bit longer or shorter than that? Um, so, so for me, um, people send a CV. Um, I, I like people to get back in touch because it's an evolving thing and um, I just want to know where everybody is at, the, <laughs> at every moment <laughs> time. and also how how you sort of you could say to me okay Jane I came on the wild screen thing and um, I've now secured two months or so in an India and stuff and I've done this and then I would want to know like where are you going next what are you sure. interested in doing and so they're on my radar and then if we run because we run sort of like entry level pools we haven't done one for a while we will be doing one this summer so that's why i'll put my name in the chat so do get in touch um but yeah so you, and also you can find me I'm, I'm you know i'm easily accessible jane zorakowski at bbc on linkedin and, and stuff um but yeah, so I would want to know, like, hey, Jane, I've now got some budget experience. Like, great, because I need to know, because if something comes down the line for me in, in, the, in the business, and I say, oh, actually, they can take someone green, but they need to have a bit of this, bit of this. I can automatically say, oh, my God, you know, I've got somebody. And then I will be able to then put them forward for that advert or say this is this is coming up and 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 forward sort of like details. So it's it's all our job is like, a moving jigsaw puzzle that will never ever get solved would you say Fran but you put one piece in and then something you know and then a piece to, it's it's constantly evolving um and so really keeping us updated is really important really important Definitely. And, and hospitality events retail all, all lends itself really well to that because you're constantly helping people out with stuff you know and jumping in and maybe doing something that you haven't done before whether it's budget related or management related um so you know the cv is constantly evolving even if you're working in the same place you're often picking up different skills on the job aren't you yeah. And also for me, it shows proactiveness. It shows that you are absolutely you, you, you really want this. And you, but you're taking it slowly and you're just, you know, you're 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 biding your time and you're sort of um, 
waiting for sort of opportunities. And the thing is, I know that. And so something I'll come and go, oh, I can email this particular group. That's why I'm really interested in, in, in hearing from people who are sort of into because I can say, well, hang on, running our PMA pool in so many months time, have a look at the BBC Careers Hub. I'm sorry, another plug for BBC, but I work for BBC, but BBC Careers Hub, you know, it's really important. Or for Fran, for, you know, for her, for her company, One Tribe, it's like, you know, the talent exec is make sure that you're on their radar and stuff. So, yeah, it's about being proactive. But at the moment, if you just want to just get some more information, you know, you we're, we're always happy, aren't we, Fran? Because yeah. I think that's I think really that's what's in our DNA is to fix things and help things move along. And it is a great privilege talking to people um, about production management and waxing because we're we're passionate about it. And hopefully that's come across because we we love this career industry, uh, love this industry, and love, love this career path. Most definitely. Were there any other questions at all that people wanted to ask? Um, we have time for one more if there is. Uh, if not, not to worry. Uh, was there anything else that um, Fran or Jane you wanted to add at all? Um, I, I, I think um, if you are thinking of doing it, it is a brilliant career path and you do have the soft transferable skills. We know because we've got people in the industry already doing production management roles who've come from different industries. And um, and I, because I, I wanted to get into, I actually wanted to get into conferencing, international conferencing. And I ended up doing the one show and that's, you know, it's, it's sort of a conference in its own right, but it's with cameras, you know, you're setting up a big event but it's just we've just got cameras on it and so mm -hmm. I feel yeah I just feel I feel you know really happy and I'm still learning and I and that's what's really exciting about the tv industry it's constantly evolving you know um and you're constantly yeah. learning something yeah. new. every you know every natural I don't know much about wildlife but when I do a natural history show I'm learning all about oyster catchers and all these <laughs> learn all, all loads of new things yeah yeah absolutely so, well, but yeah, we're, we're, we're contactable if you want to get in touch. Perfect. Um, I think we've just had one more question come in, if you don't mind answering this yeah. one. So Kim has asked, uh, is working in production management a more permanent role or is it different contracts based on projects? It's the latter. So you've got to think if you come into the TV industry, it's very freelance based. And don't be scared about that because production management do have longer, it depends on the type of program you work on, but basically we're there, aren't we, from the start to the finish, Fran. Yeah, and so yeah. that's longer contract. So, so for a natural history, you know, you could be on it for a couple of years, you know, on a fact end show, you might be on a strand, which takes about nine months, but then you might be on something that's literally just fast turnaround. You could be on it for two or three months, couldn't you? But yeah. the thing is, if you're good at what you do, you know, you do have, um, you've got market, you know, you, you shouldn't, shouldn't really be out of a job if you're, you know what I mean? It's so there is, there is, there is um, opportunities. And I think if you, but you, but you own your career then and you're moving, you're keeping it forward, you know, moving forward and get, gathering next. Because you, I always say your, your, your experience should be a bit like a Hoover. You're like, oh, that experience, that experience, that experience. And you're building this wonderful portfolio of this kit bag of skill set that when you come to do senior roles like production management, like myself and Fran, you know, you like that. You say, well, I can bring that experience in. And oh, I've, oh, I've done history docs or I've done I've done live. I've done this and this because the way the industry is working, there's a lot of cross pollination of different genres, which is brilliant for us, you know, and, and it's finding new talent with new skill sets. You know, we're doing more digital. We don't do more VFX or if we're doing more sort of, you know, more drama related type of documentaries. You know, this is all new, not say new territory, but this is all different genres coming together. And so really it's about you should be looking at what is that role going to give me in terms of those um, those skill sets to keep building? You build, consolidate, you grow, you build, consolidate, you, you know what I mean? So, yeah. 